This is WLBT Jackson. From Mississippi's number one news team, this is the WLBT 10 p.m. report. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Greg Phillips. As WLBT reported exclusively last night, the teenager accused in a triple murder is out of jail. Around 9 last night, 18-year-old Kevin Williams was released on a $250,000 personal recognizance bond. Tonight, he says he is innocent. Melissa Paretsky reports in our top story on the unusual circumstances that led to the release and on reaction from the suspect's family. 18-year-old Kevin Williams leaves the city jail Saturday night after two nights behind bars. He was arrested Thursday at Rolling Fork High School and charged with the October 4th murders of Victoria Minor, her two-week-old son, and her neighbor, Clarence Harper. In a rare move, Judge William Coleman released the teenager on a $250,000 personal bond. His attorney, Ms. Stewart, uh, called and came out last night and stated that uh, Tommy Mayfield, the assistant district attorney, and the deputy chief, Houston, had agreed on that type of bond in that amount. And so I had been following the news story, so I went ahead and, and signed it to release the plan. Judge Coleman says he did not know if Williams is guilty or innocent and says he didn't go into any of the circumstances with the suspect's attorney, Cynthia Stewart. Stewart says this kind of bond is unusual, but so is the case because of her client's strong alibi in Rolling Fork. My understanding that they have some identification testimony. I think that it's rather weak testimony, particularly compared to the two coaches and the game warden and all the players who verified that he was indeed at basketball practice at the time of the death. Uh, thanks to the community. In the meantime, the suspect's father says his son is innocent, that the relationship between Victoria Minor and Kevin was just a friendship. He says the situation has been hard on the entire family. It still seemed like a nightmare, you know, for this to happen to, uh, you know, your son, uh, uh, daughter, whatever. Uh, they, uh, they believe, uh, because of the fact that he's innocent, that uh, everything is going to come out and open uh, pretty soon. On Friday, Jackson police said they were confident in the arrest. However, today, police spokesman Robert Graham says his department has no comment on the release of Kevin Williams. Melissa Paretsky, WLBT News. Ronald Lane says his son will try to go back to school in Rolling Fork tomorrow. Lane did not wish to comment on how Jackson police handled the investigation until he talks with the detectives and learns of the circumstances and evidence that led to the arrest. Meanwhile, family members and friends of the victims also spoke, up, spoke out today about the release of Kevin Williams. Some are shocked that police would let their prime suspect in the brutal slaying out of jail. Others were more understanding, saying police may have target, targeted rather an innocent man. I don't know. I know I couldn't still live there. Glenda Harper wants the person responsible for killing her 22-year-old son Clarence and two others nearly two weeks ago brought to justice. But she says she wants police to be absolutely sure the person behind bars is the one who pulled the trigger. I have faith in the police department and the men that's doing their job and I believe that they're doing a good job. They just have so much to do. And I don't believe they would have released him if they had this strong had a strong evidence. I know they wouldn't have released him. Best thing they could do, the only thing to do was to let him go. Adrian Hilliard lives just a few doors down from where the killings took Adrian place. He grew up with both Victoria Minor and Clarence Harper. And he also thinks police may have jumped the gun. And maybe, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But it's kind of hard, hard to hold when you have 12 people that said that he was at a certain place at the time of the murder. So you think police did the right thing? Well, they did the only thing they could do. Thomas Roots, who was at home the night of the murders, thinks Williams should still be in jail. But he's not surprised he's out. No, the way people are getting out of jail these days, no, I'm not surprised. So they're letting everybody go. What was running through your mind? when you saw our 10 o'clock news last night and you saw Kevin Williams walking away from jail? Shock. And somewhat um, wondering if they're going to find a person that really did this to my child. The family of Victoria Minor did not want to comment about the release of Williams. They say 
The emotional pain of the tragedy is still too great. Now again, William still faces three counts of murder. The investigation is continuing. In other news, a Jackson man is dead tonight after crashing his pickup into a tree. Police are unsure why 46-year-old Billy Holmes of Lake Forest Avenue lost control of this late model truck. The accident happened around 6.30 this evening on Livingston Road in North Jackson. He apparently left the roadway and the vehicle flipped. Holmes was partially thrown out of the truck before it landed on him. He was taken to University Medical Center with massive head injuries before he was pronounced dead. Dr. Adib Shakir made his final official appearance today as Tougaloo College president. He helped the school celebrate its 126-year-old Founders Day convocation. As Larry Flowers reports tonight, students are saddened by Shakir's departure. ...to commune and celebrate on what is our Founders Day. As Tougaloo College celebrates its 120-year-old birthday, there is change on the way. The school is looking for new leadership after its president resigned Friday. Dr. Abdib Shakir says he sees only good things in Tougaloo's future. Well, I think that the work that we have done over the last eight years has really prepared the institution to have a very promising and bright future. And I think that uh, the test of the work, of course, that we've done, it will be its ability to last and endure. The school is also dedicating its newest addition, Berkshire Cottage. It's just the beginning of many phases of renovations for the school. During Dr. Shakir's eight-year tenure at Tougaloo, the college has seen drastic improvements both financially and physically. It's a chapter of the school's history the students rather not close. Losing a president as dynamic as Dr. Shakir, which has done great improvements since he's been here at, at the college, it, it's a sad day, but we must move on as a student body. And he has been a personal inspiration of mine, so I'm very saddened by his departure. But I wish him well in his future endeavors. There is no word on when the Board of Trustees will name a new president. Larry Flowers, WLBT News. Renowned actor Avery Brooks, who starred in Deep Space Nine, was scheduled to speak at the Founders Day conv convocation today, but was unable to attend because of filming conflicts with his new movie. American troops continue to be on the alert in the Persian Gulf, but it looks like the tense situation there may be lessening. And that tops our look at news from around the world and across the nation tonight. Iraqi troops and equipment continue to move northward, away from the Kuwaiti border. Dozens of trucks have been seen moving out of the city of Basra, carrying soldiers, tanks, and other weaponry. Reporters in the region no longer see evidence of any Iraqi military forces south of the city. Last night, the UN Security Council passed a resolution warning Iraq if they did not move their troops further north, action would be taken. The body of Israeli soldier Nakshon Voxman was buried in Jerusalem last night. Tens of thousands of mourners attended the funeral of the soldier who was kidnapped, then later killed by his captors. Voxman was abducted by members of the group Hamas, who demanded the release of over 200 Palestinian prisoners in exchange for his release. Thousands of Mexican-Americans turned out today in Los Angeles, California to protest new state border laws aimed at curbing illegal immigration from Mexico. Demonstration organizers called it the largest Latino civil rights march in history. More than 65,000 people attended. They protested in favor of what they claim are immigrant rights. And coming up next, we'll tell you about a Brandon baby who beat the odds. Stay with us. Buddy, have you caught anything yet? My, my, where'd y'all get those babies? At East Ford, listen, while supplies last, they're giving away a new shotgun or a rifle with each new truck purchase. Well, have you caught anything? What a great idea for hunting season. Yeah. Buddy! Head for the woods in this new 94 Ranger XLT 4x4 with air, cassette, and much more, only $2.96 a month. That's it, lease it for $2.96 a month. Okay, Bobby, I got a big catch on a great deal from East Ford, and I'm out of here. East Ford, Highway 80 West, Jackson. I've spent my career talking about good taste. And Captain D's has been serving seafood that tastes good. Now I'm hooked on their new seafood dinner. It comes with a flaky fish fillet, golden fried shrimp, stuffed crab, fries, coleslaw, and hush puppies. All for just $3.99. Or try the deluxe seafood platter for more of everything. Maybe I can get a job singing for my supper. By the sea, by the sea. Sorry, Charlie. Okay, you're right. Uh, I can't carry a tuna. Try Captain D's new seafood dinner, starting at just $3.99. 
If angels made ice cream, it would be heavenly made. Angel food ice cream. Creamy rich, always fresh. Or a lighter side of heaven. Angel food low-fat ice cream. Or angel food fat-free ice cream with no sugar added. And heavenly angel food low-fat frozen yogurt. Angel food is heaven on earth. In testing, the Lexus GS cornered better than the BMW 540i. You may say that it's only a matter of inches, and you'd be right. But there will be instances on the road where an inch is as good as a mile. And the GS is thousands less than the 540i at Harren Gear Lexus in Jackson. And a quick update for you tonight. Almost a year ago, we told you about a newborn baby that was fighting for her life. Mallory Angelica Walker turns one year old this week. She's doing better than her parents ever expected. Today, they had a birthday party in her honor. Mallory was born three and a half months early due to a condition her mother had called toxemia. Doctors gave her little chance for survival. The baby had to stay at Baptist Hospital for 97 days before going home. Parents Bobby and Richland Walker say this year has been the best year of their lives. She's been real healthy since she's been home. We've only had one bout of illness, and that was back in July. She had an upper respiratory infection, but it was nothing really serious. And since then, I mean, she's been just very healthy, and she's had no health problems. Plenty of attention today. Grandparents and relatives from all over came to wish her well. And more good news tonight. A Jackson businessman has gained national attention for his works with inner city children and local youth programs. Leroy Walker, the owner of a local McDonald's chain, was in Chicago, Illinois last night to receive the Jerry Newman McTLC Award. The Ronald McDonald Children's Charities Award honors individuals for their contributions to improving the lives of children in their community. Walker shared the spotlight with fellow recipient and former First Lady Barbara Bush. Walker's award comes with a $25,000 donation to be given to a charity. Walker says he will donate most of the money to 100 black men of Jackson, and the rest will be split evenly between the Smith-Robertson Cultural Museum and the Ronald McDonald Charities of New Orleans. And weather with Rosalind Anderson is next. Stay with us. What if safety wasn't important? What if comfort wasn't everything? What if value didn't matter? What if there was no excitement in life? What if all this didn't matter? But it does, doesn't it? The new 1995 Pontiac Bonneville. Now get $750 cash back at your Pontiac Pace Centers. Want to improve your home life with another bathroom, bedroom, or a deck? Bank of Mississippi could make that happen. Want to improve your driving habits with a new or late model car, truck, or van? We could do that, too. We'll even help with self-improvement, lending you money for exercise equipment, braces for the kids, even a vacation. You can improve your home life, your driving habits, yourself, with a loan from Bank of Mississippi. We'll lend you money for anything that makes life better. Let us bring money to your life. Century Cellunet introduces the future of cellular communication, Bill. Bill was in cellular denial for years. That was then. This is now. He found out Century Cellunet has different kinds of cellular phones and service plans for different kinds of people, like him and Bernice. She thought cellular phones were even more complicated than VCRs, but Century made it easy. Century Cellunet. We're changing the face of cellular communication. And Rosalind Anderson back from vacation. Uh, did you have a good vacation? Wonderful time. Kind of overcast during it, but uh, yeah. I like rain too. Kind of stayed in the area? E did some wandering around in the area. Got to see a lot of places, a lot of rain. But what I got to see tonight was rain at the fair. And then we'll show you some video of that. Was This was the last night. The lights went off tonight at 10 p.m. You are seeing one of the last turns of the Ferris wheel. 
of this 134th state fair ends on a rainy note. A familiar scene for many at this year's fair. You're seeing some of the children who got a chance to stay pretty dry under the uh, in the jungle of fun. We did see some sprinkles begin shortly around 8 o'clock. We're looking at some nice conditions uh, for the kids that are underneath those little tents. You're seeing some of the last video from tonight. The fair closes down tonight and the showers and thunderstorms are on their way. We're looking at uh, currents right now, 66 degrees under mostly cloudy skies with some sprinkles in the area as well. Your relative humidity is at 84%. Your barometer is reading 30.21 inches and rising with winds out of the south east at 7 miles per hour. We're just seeing a trace of rain reported, as I said, out at uh, Thompson Field. And this is the shower activity. This is what we're looking at. The remnants of uh, Tropical Storm Rosa, that tropical depression now has moved over. We're seeing a lot of cloud cover for the central United States. Louisiana saw up to three inches of rain as well as portions of Arkansas with five inches of rain. We're expecting this shower and thunderstorm activity to continue to move into our area, especially by the morning. This is what we're seeing in our way of showers and thunderstorms. We're looking at this cloudy area, large area of rain moving into our area from Louisiana. We're seeing just some uh, light rain, up to about 15 hundredths of an inch has been reported so far in western Mississippi. This is where most of the shower and thunderstorm activity is developing. This is where we'll be seeing it head for the next couple of days. Looking across nationally, most of the heavy thunderstorm activity was centered over in Texas where we saw some of the heavier rain dumping over into portions of Louisiana. Conditions mostly in the 60 degree range for us. Mid 60 degree temperatures across the central section of the state as well. When we wake in the morning, we'll be seeing some rain and shower activity. Your wake up temperature should be around 62 degrees. Currently, this is what we're seeing. High pressure off to the east. Cloud covers building in. This is a funnel system that we'll be moving through. We'll be seeing high pressure build in tomorrow. Chances for rain are still remaining, though, as this funnel system continues to move forward to our area. Before the remainder of the evening, though, expect a 40% chance of rain. Your low temperature should be around 62 with winds out of the southeast at 5 to 10. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Those 40% chances for rain continue in our forecast. High temperature tomorrow, maybe around 75. Tomorrow night, 40% chance of lingering showers and thunderstorms. Your low temperature should be around 61. And Tuesday, cloudy with a 50% chance of thunderstorms. Your high temperature should be around 78. Our five-day forecast says that those scattered showers and thunderstorms will remain in the forecast at least through Thursday. A little more sunshine by Friday. We're looking at those highs mainly in the low 70s by the latter part of the week with lows mainly in the 50s. All right. So hopefully the sun will be out uh, by later next week. Yeah, by the end. Okay. Thanks, Ross. And thank you for joining us. That's all the time we have for tonight. Stay tuned now for Sports Journal. Tonight the guys have a full recap of yesterday's college action as well as answering the question, is the NFL coming to Jackson? Good night and have a great week.